team recently connected with a patient who was diagnosed with a blood disorder. And having looked back at her results over a 15 year period, she saw that her levels increased over time. But by then it was too late. She is now learning to live with her blood disorder, which brings me to my next question. What can we learn from trends in test changes and when should we be concerned? I think the key word that you just mentioned is trends. So it's important to remember that as, as living organisms, we as people are going to see fluctuations in our laboratory results. And I'm gonna use myself as an example right now. I'm originally from Massachusetts, colder weather climate. And I used to have a hemoglobin value that was always around a 16. The result was always a 16 gram hemoglobin. That was always that. Well, I moved to Florida about six years ago. And because of the change in climate and, and the change that that can cause, very modest changes in our physiology, I ended up at my first visit down here having a complete blood count run, and my hemoglobin was now a 14.5, which we shouldn't see in a healthy patient. Hemoglobin values drop that drastically, uh, you know, in a healthy individual. I, I deem myself healthy for the most part. So what we did was three months later, we recollected the blood and we noticed I was still at a 14.5 and nothing had changed. And we did a little bit of research, me and my personal physician, and found that that's not unusual for someone moving from cold climates to warmer climates. But here's the problem. Not everyone comes with the, the three letter degree after their name, and they may not be a physician, or they may have no medical background. I'm a first generation college graduate. My parents don't understand this. And I certainly understand when they call up scared or frustrated at results that make no sense to them they just see it's abnormal. And what I'm gonna to recommend to everyone is number one, you have to be your own best advocate by having your own data readily available for yourself. Never have a laboratory test without getting those results and having them filed away somewhere. It is becoming much easier to do that as organizations have electronic medical records that will store that for you. And, and different uh, companies, third parties that produce cellular phones or other technology create health apps that you can track your data in yourself. But even if it's paper records, because that's what you're comfortable with, you should have those results so that you can always go to your physician and advocate and say, look it, I'm not crazy. These results are consistently trending down or consistently trending and having that data there and showcasing your concern will help you in that advocacy effort. The second is trust your instincts. If you're seeing a one singular change in a given laboratory result, ask your physician, hey, this result changed pretty drastically or it changed a decent amount. Maybe I'm wrong that it's a decent amount, but should we reconsider having this redone in a few months? This recently happened to a loved one of mine who one of their um, white blood cell counts suddenly dropped down unexpectedly. Could have been nothing, could have been something really bad. So she advocated to assure that they've had that redone three months later. And fortunately, that white blood cell count bumped right back up to where it had normally been. And so just asking that question and feeling confident in knowing it's your body, you should feel entitled in some aspects to ask that question. Maybe they won't always agree with you, but you're always entitled to ask the question. And finally, trust your gut. If you think something is off and you're not getting the answers that you need, it does not hurt to go seek a second opinion. If a second opinion agrees with the first position, it's okay. Maybe, maybe you should kind of reflect on what they're telling you. Make sure you're taking good notes at your office visits and realize that two independent physicians or healthcare providers have given you the same feedback. But that second opinion really helps you get peace of mind and assure yourself that you're gonna be okay or that you need to have follow-up work done to assure that you have as best of an outcome as you could. 
So those are always my suggestions for patient advocacy.